Hi there! You are watching a video of pressure vessels in industrial plants. Where possible, standard flanges should be used in accordance with ASME ANSI B16.5 and B16.47. However, in those cases in which pressure, temperature and or size requirements exceed the capabilities of standard flanges, special or non-standard flanges are used. It is worth mentioning that any non-standard element implies a special design and manufacturing process for each application, increasing the final price and delivery time considerably. Due to the effect of the internal pressure, three types of forces are acting in a flange. Longitudinal, tangential and radial force. These loads create a system of moments around the hub of the flange, which in turn induce different types of stresses. As it was seen in the previous image and in the one shown in the screen, the location of the gasket in the flange plays a fundamental role in the design of these elements, since it determines the magnitude of the bending moments to be absorbed. The image on the screen represents the load distribution which a flange is subjected during bolt tightening and operation. And finally, the figure shows a typical stresses distribution in a loose type flange during operation, where the maximum stress is located in the area of the hub and the bolts of the flange. When pressure, temperature and size requirements exceed the capabilities of standard flanges, non-standard ones shall be used. It should be kept in mind that non-standard flanges require calculation, design and special manufacturing processes. The special condition of these flanges increases the price of the vessel enormously, which is why they are only chosen as a last resort. There are different nozzle configurations for pressure vessels, accounting for different service requirements and design conditions. Often, non-standard flanges used in nozzles follow the integral reinforced configuration as shown in the picture. In other words, an integral flange is formed by the flange, the neck and the reinforcement. In this case, the flange is a component of an integral piece. Non-standard flanges are designed and calculated according to ASME 8 Division 1, Appendix 2 and Appendix X, and Part 4.16 in ASME 8 Division 2. Rules for the design of bolted flange connections, as described in the code, Appendix 2, apply to flanges with gaskets placed entirely within the circle enclosed by the bolt holes and with no contact outside the circle. The procedure indicated in Appendix 2 is a verification method. Flange materials and dimensions are defined and the verification procedure compares the induced stresses in the flange with respect to the allowable stresses. The design of a flange involves the following flange material, bolts material, type of gaskets and material, flange facing, RF, RJ, etc., and hub design. In the design of a bolted flange connection, 
calculation shall be made for each of the design conditions, gasket seating and operation. The more severe shall control. The gasket seating load is defined under the conditions existing when the gasket is seated by applying an initial load, with the joint at atmospheric temperature and pressure. The minimum initial load considered to be adequate for proper seating is a function of the gasket material and the effective contact area to be seated. In turn, in the operating condition the flange must resist the hydrostatic end force of the internal pressure tending to part the joint and to maintain sufficient compression on the gasket to assure a tight joint at the design temperature. The minimum load is a function of the design pressure, the gasket material and the effective contact area to be kept tight under pressure. The total hydrostatic force is applied at the center of the gasket and tends to port the joint, H in the picture. This hydrostatic force is counteracted by bolt preload forces and tightening torques, W in the picture. As a result of these forces, bending moments are generated in the hub of the flange, in other words, induced bending stresses, which need to be kept below the allowable. There are different types of flanges that can be used according to Appendix 2 of the ASME 8 Section 8 Division 1 code. The type of flange is selected mainly as a function of the design pressure and temperature and also considering the mechanical loads acting on the flange. Integral type flanges similar to welding neck flanges, have a tapered hub between the flange ring and the weld joint. The hub provides a gradual transition between the thicker flange ring and the relatively thinner pipe or vessel wall thickness, thus reducing the discontinuity at the joint. These flanges are preferred for critical services, high temperatures, sub temperatures and cyclic loading. Loose type flanges do not have a direct connection to the nozzle neck. This method of attachment is not considered to give the mechanical strength equivalent of integral attachment. Flanges that fall under this category shall not be used for the following services. Critical service, cyclic service, below minus 29 degrees Celsius service, and over 343 degrees Celsius service. The design of a non-standard flange is a laborious and iterative procedure. This is because the method presented in Appendix 2 is a verification process. The designer estimates the flange dimensions for an application and the method determines whether the induced stresses are less than the allowable or not. Once the type of flange has been selected to meet the service requirement, the below sequence shall be followed to arrive to an adequate design. First, select the joint type. Second, obtain the loads acting on the flange and bolts. Third, determine the number and size of the bolts. Fourth, obtain the bolt circle diameter. Fifth, design the flange hub for integral flanges only. Sixth, obtain the flange moment according to sections 2-6 of Appendix 2. Seventh, obtain the flange stresses according to section 2-7 of Appendix 2 and 8. Obtain the flange allowable stresses according to section 2.8 of Appendix 2. If the values of the induced stresses are higher than the allowable stresses, increase the flange thickness and recalculate.